Holiday-themed slasher films just aren't original nowadays. The trend started in the early 70s with hits like Silent Night, Bloody Night, and Black Christmas, but it really exploded in the early 80s in the wake of monster hits like Halloween and Friday the 13th. It seems like every holiday has a slasher movie attached to it, and Cinco de Mayo is no exception. I'm actually surprised that it took until 2013 to finally use this holiday for a slasher movie. Now, with this review being released on May 5th, there's no better time than now to talk about this holiday-themed slasher film. Welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. Cinco de Mayo is an independent horror film, and wowzers, this movie is something else. I can't say it's a good movie, but it's a passion project made on a $0 budget. So keep all of that in mind as I describe the plot and show you clips. <sighs> Wowzers. Cinco de Mayo starts with a weird intro bumper of a girl describing the movie to us. This harkens back to something like USA up all night without any of its charm. Oh, I hate these things, but I'm not worried. Luckily, I brought in an expert. Time to play. Okay, here, Zippy. The film revolves around this college professor known as El Maestro to his students. El Maestro is a strong but passive educator who is proud of his Hispanic heritage. He teaches about Mexican history in his class. His students are awful and are only taking the class because all the other classes were full. You'll notice that almost everyone in this film is either a racist or at the very, very least, they're highly offensive. And this is where you realize that the film has a message. It has a political agenda, and it's trying to push that agenda. And that's all fine and dandy, but I'm just not a fan of that in my horror films. I know pushing political agendas was a big thing in the 70s, and speaking of the 70s, Cinco de Mayo has a grindhouse feel to it. At times, it's almost effective. There are some shots that look like they are straight out of a grindhouse movie from the 70s. There's a decent battered film grain over the whole movie, but then you see some bad digital pixelization and it takes you out of the film. You can tell it's shot on a shoddy digital camera with some bad pixelated spots. Anyways, everyone in town is a redneck white supremacist. El Maestro is fired from his job due to his beliefs and is forced to see a psychiatrist who tries to push his own agenda onto El Maestro. He tries to make El Maestro believe that he is born from this Mexican hate and violence. It's in his genes and there's nothing that he can do about it. Well, all of this sets El Maestro off and he begins to kill every racist in town, which is mostly everyone. And honestly, that's it. Halfway through the movie, there's a trailer to another movie that was never made called Dance Until You Die. It's reminiscent of what Robert Rodriguez did in his Grindhouse movies. So, what can I even say about Cinco de Mayo? Well, let's start with the good. The music is fitting and it's solidly composed. created by an independent artist known as Vestron Vulture, and he did a good job scoring the film. The story, while not my cup of tea, is presented well enough and has some interesting ideas. I also enjoyed the idea of the killer. It's a cool mask, and having the killer be a teacher could have been an interesting twist. Um, hmm. I guess some of the actors are okay for this type of movie. Most were a little too dry though. Um, and it looks like the people who made this movie really enjoy their time working on it. They seem proud of what they did, and that's awesome. Now we're on to the bad, and there's plenty of it, but my biggest complaint is that the film just looks so amateurish. Shot composition is mostly horrible, except for this one shot. That one's okay. Lighting is god-awful though. Most of the time it looks like they just use the natural light in the room and it makes everything look so bland. Set design is non-existent. Everything looks so empty and hollow. There's a lot of filming outside and it looks bad. The ISO is too high and the shot is overexposed, causing the sky to be washed out. The contrast looks horrible. At times, it sounds like they use the in-camera microphone and it clips a lot in certain spots. 
As much as I want to like this film, I can't. I was almost annoyed when watching it. I usually love garbage cinema. I've created some really, really bad and dumb movies growing up, and I enjoy watching someone else's home movies. But this isn't someone posting their work on the internet with just 100 views. Cinco de Mayo got a Blu-ray release from a distribution company. All of Films of Slasher Video distributes this film both on DVD and Blu-ray. My friend has made better movies while in high school, and films like Cinco de Mayo get recognized? It just sucks. I guess it's not always about talent, but instead, it's about getting lucky. Technology is so advanced nowadays that anyone can make a movie now. It's both a blessing and a curse. I've seen some talented people get an opportunity to make some truly creative stuff, and then there are movies like Cinco de Mayo. A cool idea without a clear vision of how to get it made. I hate being negative, but I just did not enjoy my time with this movie. It might be watchable for some, but I wouldn't seek it out unless you knew someone behind the project. I wouldn't recommend buying this movie, but if you found it on a streaming service and you thought it looked interesting, then I guess check it out. And that's all I have for tonight. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe, and take care everyone.